Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to walk through the deployment of a Kemp Virtual Loadmaster in the Microsoft Azure Cloud Service. The environment we will use in Azure consists of two IIS servers, which we will load balance using a Virtual Loadmaster appliance, also known as a VLM. The servers have a public IP address that is NATed to an internal private IP address. Each server also has endpoints defined that control the port forwarding from the public IP to the private IP. We will deploy the virtual loadmaster in one-armed mode in the same subnet as the IIS servers. Azure will automatically create two endpoints for management via web or SSH. To deploy the loadmaster, we will select the appropriately sized loadmaster from the marketplace, Connect the new Loadmaster instance to the same subnet as the IIS servers we will load balance. We will then tell Azure to deploy the virtual appliance. Once the appliance is deployed, we will create an additional endpoint for the IIS application traffic on port 443. We will then configure the Loadmaster to load balance traffic arriving at the public IP address between the IIS servers via the Azure Private LAN. The Loadmaster will offload the TLS traffic by decrypting and encrypting communications between external clients and the IIS servers. The quickest way to find what Loadmaster options are available is to search for the word KEMP in the Azure Marketplace. Select the appropriate Loadmaster for the workload from the search results. And then click on the Create button to create the Loadmaster instance. In this panel, we can name the Loadmaster instance and provide user credentials. The username provided here is ignored. The default BAL username is used instead. However, the password provided will be used to access the virtual appliance along with the BAL username. If you prefer to configure the service via SSH, you can select the SSH option. We also need to make sure the virtual appliance is deployed in the correct Azure network. Click on optional configuration, and then network. And make sure the appliance is being deployed in the same virtual network and subnet as the IIS servers. Once this network information is confirmed, we can proceed with deployment of the virtual loadmaster. The deployment will take a few minutes and progress can be monitored from the Azure homepage. Once the instance is deployed, it is assigned an IP address in the same Azure private network as the IIS servers and also given a public DNS name and a public virtual IP address. In this example, we will use the DNS name to access the services externally. As mentioned earlier, the appliance is deployed with management and SSH endpoints available. We will add a new endpoint for the Loadmaster on port 443, the default SSL TLS port, to forward traffic from the public IP address to the appliance. It may take a minute or two for the newly added endpoint to appear. We can now connect to the administration interface via port 8443 on the DNS name. There will be a trust warning from the browser due to the self-signed certificate on the appliance, which can be ignored. You will be prompted for the administration credentials, which will be the username, BAL, and the password provided earlier when creating the Loadmaster instance. The end user license agreement is displayed and clicking on the Agree button will proceed to the next step of the process. You can now optionally allow the virtual appliance to check for firmware updates. Loadmasters are licensed based on a customer's Kemp ID. If you do not have a Kemp ID, you can register for one on the kemptechnologies.com website. The appliance will indicate successful licensing and proceed to prompt for a new administration password for the appliance. Once the password has been set, the home page of the administration interface is displayed. Clicking on Virtual Services and Add New will begin the process of configuring the appliance to distribute traffic across the two servers already deployed in the Azure LAN. The virtual address of the service will default to the IP address of the appliance and should not be changed. Set the port to 443 as we want to accept traffic using the HTTPS protocol. Leave the network protocol at the default value of TCP. Click on Add this virtual service to proceed. Clicking on the plus sign 
will expand the additional options. In the standard options, we must turn off transparency. There are options available to specify advanced persistence and scheduling options, but we will take the defaults. When we select the SSL panel and enable SSL acceleration, we will get a warning about a temporary SSL certificate being used. This temporary certificate can be replaced at any time by an appropriate certificate. With the temporary certificate in place, the SSL properties can be configured. We will accept the default values and proceed to configuring the forwarding of traffic to the IIS servers. In a load master, the servers that host the application are known as real servers. Clicking on the Add New button will display the new server dialog. In this page, we add each of the servers that host the application being balanced. As we are offloading the SSL processing, traffic will be on port 80. Once the servers are added, the virtual service becomes active and traffic can be forwarded to the IIS servers. To ensure that traffic is not forwarded to unavailable servers, a health check is used to determine the status of each server. The default is to do a check via HTTP, which we will use. From the outside, a client can now connect to the DNS name using HTTPS. Thank you for taking the time to join us. To discover more on application delivery with Loadmaster, please visit kemptechnologies.com.